What's going on everybody, Trey for Payback in the building, coming at you guys with day seven of the Daryl Brooks trial. Already on day seven, we're getting through this trial, but before I begin, I do wanna take the time to say thank you so much to everybody for sticking with me, cause I know listening to this and some of you have already seen this trial before this whole case is really heavy so thank you all for sticking with me and i do want to really quick say thank you so much to rebecca reams for her ten dollar donation i think you wanted me to check out a specific case this was zach anderson i think his name might have been like zachariah anderson but i did take a look at it the case ended due to a mistrial i believe they called it a mistrial without prejudice so apparently there's something called mistrial with prejudice and mistrial without prejudice so he can be tried for the same charges i had no idea that was a thing like you guys are teaching me about law and then watching these videos i'm learning a lot of stuff that i had no idea was even a thing so i appreciate it so much but also i don't ask anybody to send me anything or to donate at all but i do want to say if you guys would like to donate to the community of waukesha i will have links pinned at the top of the comments so if you would like to send them something it will be right there for you okay day six was super super stressful we just gonna go ahead and get into it i'm not even gonna beat around the bush daryl is already sitting on my screen right now i don't know if like i have the screen up right here yet but he's already sitting here so that's already got me in a bad mood <laughs> i'm playing without further ado let's go ahead and get into it oh boy i truly believe he does and you guys said in the comments as well, he just wakes up out of bed and like, as the case or as the trial is going on, he finally reads some papers. Daryl Brooks, case number 21 cf God knows he's not reading them please. during his free time. And Zach Wichow. Sir, state your name for the record, please. I'm here as a third party intervening in the matter, in this matter, as authorized representative for my client. I accept for value in return. No more. No more of that. The record should reflect that the individual known to this court as Daryl Brooks is present in person in custody in street clothes, specifically a suit and tie and a mask. Um, I just also want to make a record quickly that um, a number of documents were left by Mr. Brooks in the holding area uh, just outside the courtroom. They have been put on his desk today. It's all of the autopsy protocols that were provided to him yesterday, the hard copies, that is, uh, the diagrams that were uh, presented in court related to those protocols, and a copy of the pretrial offer. So I just wanted to make that record. Hold on. Not right yet, please. So um, I have been advised that all of the jurors he's are already here and he's already i told you at the beginning of the day all the stupid little ideas that he came up with while he was sitting in a cell he wants to just like throw all of them out and then we have to get him back on the rails like it's it's about to happen he's like winding up to do it and right ready now. to go i presume the state speaks. has available its next witness we do agree to also move states exhibit 162A into evidence. As to 162A, Mr. Brooks, um, any position on that? Yeah, I object. I haven't even seen it, first of all. And second of all, again, for the record. Mr. Brooks, I'm dealing only with the uh, exhibit right now. Sorry for the interruption, but I need to uh, do that without interruption from you. Uh, 162A was a screen capture. Uh, that related to an annotation that a witness made. Um, I believe that was during witness number 34. Yes, that was th uh, Mr. Hallmark. And so based upon that, uh, Exhibit 162A so is He's received, and I it. will so advise the jury uh, when they come in. Uh, sir, I'm not going to address any preliminary matters at this point. I've already addressed uh, a number of things yesterday the jury is to be brought out no there were some things that need to be discussed about the paperwork from yesterday um we'll take that up on a break you can look over it and you can make a note and pass it to I've my already, clerk i've already looked over it your honor with all respect i think there's some things mr brooks need, i'm not going to deal with it right now it's paperwork i just wanted it notated that you dude you've been instructed move on this never works in your favor i mean we're day seven this is day seven 
and it's never worked, but we're still here somehow. Left it, and now He's it's trying being provided to you again. I'm not referring to that paperwork. I'm not right. dealing with the paperwork from the clerk of court's office either. I am not the custodian. We're going to bring the jury out. Okay, but she should, Mr. She Brooks, should know that she's trying Mr. to Brooks, get me I, the paper. Stop. I am not addressing it. it. It has to be addressed. All right, I'm going to take a quick break and make sure the jury's ready. And if we'll I, don't, off the if bench. I don't address it now. Yes, I'm so glad Judge Jennifer's not taking it today. To, she's not taking it today. It's been a full week of this nonsense, too. And look, I'm reacting to this this trial, and like there are days in between where I don't even see Daryl Brooks. She's seen him for a week straight now, and she has to deal with this nonsense. I know this is like wearing wearing down her patience, but she still maintains like her uh her composure let me see we'll fast forward to when she comes civil back matter? no I was told to pay for something under a civil statute. Mr. Statute. Brooks, I am not the custodian. Bring it up with the clerk of court. How I'm not can I addressing bring it up it. with the clerk of court? She, how, how am I supposed to do that? So that makes me wonder if Fisher it, Price, it, bro. Mr. Brooks, case. the jury's coming out. I'm not going to address your request for open civil, records. That's, civil, I'm not the custodian of the records, sir. Being sued? My sesty trust is being sued? <sighs> Civil Mr. Brooks, this is an irrelevant matter that you're attempting Look, to bring up in the presence of the was, jury. The record should not, reflect these interruptions. Before the jury came out, Your Honor. You and I told that. you I wasn't going to address it. Please. Okay, so it's a civil matter. How, who's being sued? My sister trust because I, how can I be Mr. Brooks, <laughs> it, you're talking about an irrelevant matter between you and the it clerk of court. It wasn't irrelevant so, when I got the paperwork from the clerk of courts. I was sending Mr. This is the same situation from last time. He knows how to do nothing. The only way he knows how to accomplish a task is to ask everybody to do it for him. She's told him numerous times, take it up with the clerk of court. He's still here saying, hey, can you just do it for me, though? Like, can you just take care of this for me? No. Brooks, I'm not going to address that. The jury will so disregard I'm, I'm these irrelevant comments. Matter. We haven't addressed subject matter. All right, matter. thank you, everyone. Please be seated. The Jury will so disregard the statements the Mr. Brooks is making about subject matter jurisdiction. They are a misstatement of the law. Yes. No, All right, not. and just like this is a civil case. Mr. Brooks, the jury's here. Please like show respect and decorum. According to this um, document, this is a Mr. Civil Brooks, case, please stop. Which means someone is being sued. Civil is a suit. Mr. Brooks, you're talking about an irrelevant matter. I'm starting the trial. Of course, right here that says it's a civil matter. Mr. Brooks so has nothing to do with My this case. Trust is being sued. I have no idea what you're talking about. So I, I got the paperwork right here. All right, I'm going to excuse the jury right about. now, given this disruption. I'll I rise for so the jury. Bad. Somebody in the she comments said that uh, day seven is going to be a lot better. Mr. Brooks, stop. I'm He's probably going to get kicked out. I'm you assuming. are. Not I being respectful to this proceeding or to with this jury. Respect, no, it's not with all due respect, respect all stating due respect, that doesn't make it respectful. This paperwork by you, Mr. Brooks, Monica Pass, stop talking till the jury court. is out. Okay. Isn't that annoying? People say with all due respect. That means they're about to say something super. Thank you. Why can we address something this before the they came out? I'm that not going to address it. That bottom was the line. Time to address it though. We're supposed to do all the all the addresses before the jury comes out before we start. The matter. Please I was be seated. Trying to simply address paperwork that was given to me by you, Your Honor. That states Mr. That Brooks, this, it states that you have interrupted me matter. repeatedly. You are on the verge of being removed to that courtroom. I don't want to do that. What, I want you to stay here. But you law, keep Honor? interrupting me and bringing up out. irrelevant matters. I He's told you yesterday as a courtesy you. that was provided to you so that you would frankly not complain that you didn't get it as quickly as possible. Okay. I am not the custodian of the records. If you have an issue with what was provided to you, how it was provided to you, then take it up with the clerk of she court. But from you. now on, I am not going to be the messenger and give you documents that you request to the custodian of the records or from the custodian of the records. They will simply have That's to be right. delivered to you at the jail. But that is in response to your discussion or whatever we want to it's call going it this over morning. Head, I'm not taking it up.
It All right, it is irrelevant. It, it needed to be noted for the record. It doesn't need it to was, be noted, sir. All right, the jury. <laughs> he said all this. He already said this, though. If it was just a matter of he just wants to note it for the record, he already did that a long time ago. So clearly, he, he just wants to be disrupted today. And somebody said in the comments, it's a phone call between him and his mom where he says, like, I'm going to disrupt this case as much as I can. That is insane. Just when you think, like, he can't get any dumber that he, he pulls something like that he's coming back out and i'm going to warn you if you bring this up again i will pause and i will remove you to the next courtroom for being disrespectful for Please being do. interruptive for being disruptive and for bringing up irrelevant matters in front of this jury you will forfeit your right to be present for the direct examination of this witness Objective did you matter. hear what i said no sir? i did not I, I object to it well, you can and object, and your objection is noted, but if you interrupt record, when this jury comes the out, record, they will go, I will rem I will have them taken out again, and you will be removed to the next well, courtroom. You can't, what is the legal basis for that ruling, Your Honor? Illinois versus Allen, sir, and all of the and, other cases that I've cited previously, anything, I'll make the appropriate record. Stop interrupting me. The judge Jennifer's the not having it today. Out, we're She's continuing not having with it. this trial despite your repeated efforts to disrupt. That's yesterday, sit down. Record. Yesterday alone, sir, 17 interruptions, not including the opportunity that I gave you where you spent 50 minutes, okay, discussing what were primarily either irrelevant or baseless accusations and requests not based in law or fact. I was abundantly patient with you yesterday. And you still have to and so much patience. Any of what and I none of that is required, sir. Because and it is. You can't verify Your belief... Proof. That Where's that's the, the law the doesn't make it so, Mr. Brooks. Your belief that these are legitimate legal positions they doesn't are. change the law and doesn't make it so. It, 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 so, it's again. Relevant because you didn't exactly. This is exactly. And this is what you guys tell me in the comments, too. This sovereign citizen stuff. Like, he seriously seems to believe just because he believes it then that means we all should believe it like what like this is reality real life none of us hear any of this stuff he's saying and go oh yeah no, no that's worked before like this makes complete sense like he can't even say a time where this type of stuff has has worked for anybody the sovereign citizen thing has never worked i mean i don't i can't say if it's worked or not but i'm pretty sure it's, it's never worked because like come on now these things that he's saying, like, even when I hear them and with my little knowledge of the legal system, I hear it and I'm like, okay, this, I've never heard anybody say this stuff before. It, it just sounds like it's BS. I'm going to step off and give Mr. Brooks five minutes to cool off. And not, when that I, happens, I don't I'm bringing cool the jury I'm not, I'm out not angry at and all. then we will I just wanted continue. To, I don't... And now he's trying to play the role of, oh, I'm not angry. You're the one that's angry. That is so, that, that's frustrating. I wish the bailiffs could put him in a sleeper hold right here. It's two bailiffs. I wish they could just, just deal out a little bit of justice right now. Let me see. Audio is back. Thank okay. you, everyone. Please be seated. All right, the jury can be brought out, please. subject matter jurisdiction yet again. Here he is trying to stare intimidating. He's trying to intimidate the judge again. That's wild, though. This is really how you treat a kid. Like, you leave the... Or not leave the room, but you give them, like, a timeout almost. 
come back and then they finally understand like what they did wrong and they stop. I see some people in the comments they say that they're um some of y'all are school teachers and stuff. That's really cool. Like it amazes me when I hear about you guys' like occupations and stuff and like where everyone is from. Thank you, I everyone. see some people are from Australia, Britain. Um Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, while you of, were like not Canada. with us, the state moved Exhibit 162A, and I did receive it. All over America. With that, uh, like, we it have on the witness me. stand. The state calls Assistant Chief Craig Learman. All right, sir, would you please stand and raise your right hand, and my clerk, Teresa, will swear you in. Oh, the witness is already here. The testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Thank you, sir. Please be seated. So the first thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and spell each. Sure. First name, Craig, C-R-A-I-G. Last name, Learman, L-I-E-R-M-A-N-N. -N. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. I'd like to direct your attention to Sunday, November 21st of 2021. Did you attend the Waukesha Christmas Parade that day? Yes, I did. Were you alone or with other people? I was with my family. Overruled. Could you say that again? I was with my family. And I see you're wearing a uniform today. What do you do for a living? I'm uh, assistant chief with the Franklin Police Department. Were you at the parade in your law enforcement capacity? I was not. Why were you there? I was there to attend the uh, parade just uh, to get in the Christmas mood. Oh, we got another officer that was actually participating. Well, I don't know if he was participating yet, but yeah, he was just there as like a bystander pretty okay. much. Um, and did you have any family members participating in the parade? I did not. Where were you standing or observing the parade? I was standing on the West Main Street, uh, very near the intersection of Maple, um, just to the west of Maple. Do you know if you were on the north side or the south side of Main Street? I was on the south side of Main Street. Can we please put up for the jury uh, exhibit number 15, which has previously been received and published? Go ahead. Overruled. And can we zoom in on the bottom left quadrant here? Should be 15. Do you recognize the area uh, on the map that you're looking at? Yes. What does it depict? Uh, it's a map of the parade route. Christmas parade route. Could you draw a little X for us um, if you can find where you were standing with your family? Objection. Overruled. Do you want me to go up and touch the map? Is that oh, the screen in front of you. I'm sorry. The screen in front of you is okay. a touch screen. You can use your finger. Sure. Okay. Overruled. I would be right, basically right there. Just just west of the intersection with Maple by maybe 20 to 50 feet. Okay, southwest corner, Maple and Main. Yes. We can clear that then, please. Uh, could we now please display for the jury Exhibit 56, which has also been previously received and published. Go ahead. Make sure I'm recording, we're good. This is, uh, an exhibit has already been received into evidence. It's a, obviously a diagram of the intersection we're talking about. Do you recognize this intersection? Objection here, sir. Overruled. Yes, I do. And could you point out for us by, again, drawing a, a little X uh, where you and your family were standing? Yes, it would be approximately right here. Okay, so the, again, southwest corner of Maple and Maine. Yes. Do you recall what happened? We can take that down, please. Do you recall what happened at approximately 4.39 p.m. that Sunday afternoon? Objection. Court rule. Yes. Can you tell us? Sure. Um, standing at that location, um, the parade was coming from my right to my left, so from the east to the west. Um, there was a break in the parade in front of me um, 
to my right was the Milwaukee Dancing Grannies. To my left was a group from the Catholic community of Waukesha. And there was a break in the parade right in front of me, an opening. Um, I heard the crowd um, become more excited than normal. Um, so I felt like something was coming, but I didn't know what. Didn't know if it was a unusual parade thing or what, but people became more excited, so it kind of grabbed my attention. Um, then I realized something wasn't quite right. Um, I could see a vehicle um, traveling from the east to the west. Um, at first I could only see the top portion of the vehicle from maybe the um, windshield up because there was people obviously standing along, along the route, so they kind of obstructed my view. Um, but I could see that the vehicle was traveling at a much faster rate than any of the other participants, so clearly something was wrong. Could you describe the vehicle for us? Um, at first I could only tell that it was an, probably like an SUV because of, again, my vision was obstructed by the people that were standing watching the parade. Um, as I got closer, uh, I could see that it was a uh, red Ford Escape SUV. What happened as the SUV got closer to you? As it got closer to me, um, I could hear that the engine was revving very high. The RPMs were much higher than normal, almost like it was um, maybe in the wrong gear or there was something mechanically wrong with it. It was revving, like I said, revving much higher than a typical car. It definitely grabbed your attention. Uh, so now Daryl's going to have a bunch of questions about that. Exactly what he's going to ask around that, I'm... I don't know. Maybe he's going to try to, like, take what he said and spin it into, um, because, you know, he's trying to play so many different angles here. It's like, I know one of the angles that he is trying to use is that there was, like, a mechanical issue with the vehicle. So he might try to, like, work into that some more and try to get him to, like, agree that there was something wrong with it. Which I don't see that happening. He he's not going to give Daryl that kind of that kind of space with that or room to like actually use that. Okay, what happened next? Um, as I got closer, I could hear something, which I didn't know if it was like the engine sputtering or I didn't really know what it was. Um, again, kind of unusual. Um, but then as it got closer, um, you could see that it was, again, traveling at a high rate of speed. I was concerned at that point in time um, that either there's some sort of mechanical issue with the car possibly, or maybe some parade participant was having a medical emergency, but the, clear, the vehicle was clearly not under control in relation to everything else that was going on. How close did the SUV get to you? He's right. In as it passed me, it came uh, more towards my side of the street, so it would have been traveling essentially um, west in what would be the eastbound lanes normally. Um, so when it passed by me, it was very close, probably maybe 10 feet away at most. Were there parking spaces in front of you where you were standing? I, be I believe there were, yes. Do you recall if the vehicle passed through the parking spaces in front of you at all? Objection, relevancy. Overruled. Yes. Could you describe the lighting conditions at that time? What were the, the sunlight, street lights, things like that? Um, it was, if I remember correctly, it was getting to be towards dusk. Um, I don't believe the street lights, lights were on at that point in time, but it was, it was getting darker, but it was still, um, like I said, I would describe it as maybe dusk slightly before that. How good of a look did you get at the driver? A very good look. Okay. Can you describe, or did you? Can you give us a physical description of what you remember? I remember the driver being uh, a light-skinned male, black, approximately thirty, mid thirties, mid to late thirties. Um, had very facial hair and um, what I would describe as like dreadlocks, longer <coughs> hair, longer hair. What was the driver doing as he passed you? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. Uh, as he was driving by, he uh, the window was open. He stuck his head 
and actually like the upper portion of his body out the driver's window and looked back behind him. The window you're talking about, which window is that? It would be the driver's window. And he actually stuck his head out the window. Overruled, he may answer. Correct, uh, to the point where I briefly, it crossed my mind, he actually may fall out. That's how far out I perceived him to be. That's some sick stuff. He did that and then wanted to see it. That, what that's the, some what sick direction was the driver looking when right he stuck there. his head out the window? He was looking behind him. From the direction that he had come from? Correct. Correct. What happened next? Um, at that point when he when he looked back and then he kind of turned towards the front, uh, based on his body language, um, my heart kind of sank because I felt like what I thought could be maybe a medical emergency or something like that. To me, it clearly uh, I felt like it was an intentional act, so that obviously upset me a little bit. And um, then the driver, after he had leaned back, he turned forward, he grabbed the steering wheel, he pulled himself up off the seat and cranked the steering wheel to the right. So let the record reflect that the witness used both hands <coughs> at the 10 and 2 position to simulate the driver's hands on the steering wheel. Objection to that. Um, overrule, the record will reflect. <coughs> what happened as the driver cranked the steering wheel to the right? Unfortunately, when he did that, he essentially steered the vehicle across the parade route at a diagonal angle directly through um, a group of people that were walking with the Catholic, sorry, the uh, Catholic community of Waukesha. Based on your memory of where those people were in the road and the SUV's path of travel, what would have happened if the SUV had simply maintained a straight path instead of veering to the right? Objection, speculative. Um, overruled, he may answer. I believe that there was a gap between where the Catholic community from Waukesha was standing and the, the parade um, spectators. So there should have been an open alleyway if he would have went straight. So he consciously, that is insane. There was an open alleyway for him to go out. I mean, we know at this point he was doing all this intentionally but you hear this there was an open alleyway for him to go he decided to turn right to hit another parade group what happened next uh when he, oh, unfortunately when he drove through that group um he struck many of them a lot of them kind of bouncing off the hood and um, some of them, unfortunately, actually ran over. I could see them kind of people come out from underneath the vehicle. Did you see the vehicle at any point attempt to strike the word attempt? Did you at any point see the vehicle slow down? Objection. Speculative. Overruled. No, not at all. Did you see brake lights? Nope, none. Did you hear a horn honking? Nope, not at all. I'd like to put up for the witness only, please, exhibit number 133. I wonder why he stopped asking the horn questions, too. It okay, seems like he kind of... clip. It's cleared now. Uh, we're going to just play it for you once. Let me know if you recognize what you're looking at after you watch it, okay? Objection. Overruled. Okay. But that's disgusting, though. He leaned out the window and saw the carnage he caused yes. and then went to what cause more. What does this depict? Uh, that depicts the uh, red um, Ford Escape traveling through the closed parade route uh, from the east of Maple through that intersection with Maple on Main Street to the west, um, very close to where I was standing. Does that video accurately depict the events as you saw them unfold that day? Yes, it does. Move exhibit 133 into evidence and ask to publish. Um, overruled exhibit 133 is received. Permission to publish is granted. Let me just wait for the bailiff to 
Yes, there wasn't. There's a delay, so the monitor's in the jury box. Okay. Trying to remain a little bit more calm for this day. Could you just day. tell us which part of the screen does the SUV oh, no. enter? Objection, the witness. It, Overruled. It enters from the right side of the screen and progresses across to the, essentially kind of the left side of the screen. Okay. Hold on, I didn't really hear that question. Could you just tell us which part of the screen does the SUV enter? Objection, the witness. It, Overruled. It enters from the right side of the screen and progresses across to the, essentially, kind of the left side of the screen. Okay, let's play this once then. Why was it playing so fast? <coughs> Is that normal speed? Um, Mr. Brooks, it's not your time to ask questions. You'll have an opportunity to ask those uh, previously, or er, uh, when... Can we put up for the witness only, please, exhibit number 132? So same concept here. I'm just going to play a few seconds for you. You let me know if you recognize the area depicted in the video and what happens as it plays. Let's keep going. Do you recognize that video? Yes. What does it show? Uh, it shows the same red Ford Escape SUV that I've been talking about come in from the right-hand side of the screen across the left-hand side of the screen, uh, striking at least one person there. And do you see the vehicle um, changing position in the road towards the end of that video? Oh. Can I see it again? Sure. For the record, how long is this clip? It is 11 seconds. Thank you. From my perspective, the vehicle travels straight through the video from right to left. Okay. Can we, is this an accurate? Uh, representation of what you saw that day? Yes. Move exhibit 132 into evidence and request permission to publish. Exhibit 132 is received. Permission to publish is granted. No objection. We'll wait for the bailiff. But yeah, I'm trying to stay a little okay. bit more calm in this one. I feel like in the last video I got really uh, worked up. This is like a lot of... Like hearing the stuff this dude did, man, is... You, you guys know, it's heavy. It's I'd heavy like to go back to the six second mark. Set it to 40%, please. And play from there. Go ahead. You see him just like scanning the screen for like slight mistakes and everything? Like them not acknowledging the speed or something like that of the video? We go back to the six second mark. Objection. What's the relevancy of keep going back? You see, you have a question for the witness? I do, yep. All right, overall. Can you, uh, using a small, a little X again, can you draw on the screen the approximate area where you would have been standing at this time? Sure. 
I would have been somewhere down in that area. Yeah. So the sidewalk running kind of up the middle of the screen here, that'll run into Maple? Yes. And then you would be on the other side of Maple? Yes. Um, overruled, his answer may stand. Just caution the state about leading questions. Thank you. Do you know what side of the street this camera is on, north or south? This uh, overruled, he asked if he knew. This camera would be on the south side of Main Street. And what direction is the camera facing? This <coughs> camera will be facing to the west. Okay. And can we back up a little bit, maybe to the three second mark? Okay, we're at the three second mark. Do you see the SUV that you've been talking about in the video right now? Objection, lead the witness. Overruled. Yes. Can you please circle it for us? Thank you. We can clear that. Now, paying attention to the tail lights, let's play again at 40% from that spot, three seconds. Did you see the the tail lights of the SUV doing in the last few seconds of that video? Objection. What's the relevancy? Um, overruled. He may answer. I didn't see the tail lights on as far as like brake lights. I didn't see any brake lights. But the uh, <coughs> the rear facing lights were illuminated in some way, correct? Objection. The witness. Sustained. Please. Tail lights, not brake lights. <coughs> Oh, please rephrase. Sure. She Did already you see any lights on the back so of the vehicle? Don't know what the extra stuff Which was. Which ones? About. Tail lights. And what did you see the tail lights doing in that portion of the video? Objection. The witness. Overruled. The tail lights were on. But the position of the vehicle, did you see that change? Objection. The witness. Overruled. I did not. Okay. You testified earlier that you thought there might be some type of mechanical issue. Did you maintain that opinion? No. Why not? Speculative. Overruled. Based on the body language that the driver had exhibited as he passed me, there was no panic, there was no um, distress, like he was trying to stop the vehicle. Um, in fact, he seemed to me like he was excited about what he was doing. Would please put up for the witness exhibit number 34, again for the witness only. Go ahead. 134, excuse me. Yep. Go ahead. 134. We're going to play, this is a 16 second clip, we're just going to play um, the first 7 or 8 seconds for you. That's good. We played six seconds. Do you recognize that video? Do I recognize the vehicle in the video? Yes. Yes. Jason, that wasn't the question, Your Honor. Um, overruled. He may answer. The answer was yes. Yes. Okay. This is based on your recollection of the scene that day. This would be where in relation to where you were standing. That would be west of my location. What happens to Main Street as you go west of where you were standing? Objection. The witness. The rule. Approximately a block to the west, the road takes a sharp turn to the left or south. You testified earlier that the driver's window was down when it passed you. Is that correct? Yes. Does this video accurately depict uh, how the SUV looked, including that window? At the time you saw it? Objection. Speculative. The window was open. Um, overruled. He may answer. What did he say? Did he say my window was open? Did he just claim the vehicle? Hold on. Is that correct? Yes. Does this video accurately depict uh, how the SUV looked, including that window, 
at the time you saw it? Objection. Speculative. No window was open. Um, overruled. He may he answer. Say my or what? He's testifying about what he recalled, not what someone else thought. Go ahead. Yes. I move exhibit 134 into evidence and request permission to publish. Objection. Hearsay. The objections overruled. Exhibit 134 is received. Permission to publish is granted. That would be insane, all this sovereign citizen stuff, and then he claims, like, the window. My window is open. Okay. We'll he play said this. it seemed like he One was enjoying it, too. That's some real sinister stuff. The video that we just played, Exhibit 134, that's how you recall seeing the video that day, the vehicle that day? Yes. Now if we could put up for the witness only, Exhibit number 9, please. Do you recognize this exhibit? Yes. What is it? That's the uh, red SUV that I saw on the parade that day. Um, the damage done, the pics in the front of the vehicle is consistent with what I saw. The driver's window is open, like I saw, and that's the uh, driver that I saw driving the vehicle that day. This exhibit 9 appeared to be a screenshot from the video that we just saw, Exhibit 134? Yes. I move Exhibit 9 into evidence and request permission to publish. Objection. Speculative. Exhibit 9 is received. Permission to publish is granted. Wow. That is insane. And look at the front of the look at the front of the vehicle. That is insane. I wish he would have fallen out. He said he looked like he was going to fall out. I I really wish he would have. I'm ready to see the sentence in the, once again. I love seeing that 700 whatever years. I think it's 800, over 800. What did you do after the SUV drove out of your field of view? I uh, checked on my family. They were physically unharmed. Um, so then I went into the road to see how I can help people. Did you? Yes. Who? Um, stepped out into the road. I looked to my left and to my right in each direction. I would estimate probably 12 to 15 people in each direction that were lying in the road in various positions. Um, I just walked up to the first people that I saw to my west, which would have been uh, people that were with the uh, Catholic community of Waukesha. And did you uh, attempt to render any medical aid to anybody in that group? Yes. Can you describe that? Um, so it happened upon two people. Um, one was an adult male, um, and then one was a small child, probably 8 to 11. Um, the adult male was conscious. He was lying on his side. Um, I, think, I believe it was the right side of his head on the ground. Um, he complained that he couldn't move his legs. Um, and then the young girl uh, was unconscious. She was lying on her stomach, face down, with her head tucked essentially down underneath her, like onto her chest essentially. The adult male that you described, did he provide you with a first name? Yes, he did. What was that? Jason. 
the girl that you mentioned, uh, did you ever learn her name? I have an idea who it is now. I did not learn it that day, though. Okay. Uh, what happened as you came upon that girl with her head tucked down into her chest? Um, I believe there was at least one other Good Samaritan that had come down to assist her. Um, she was not, like I said, she was not conscious. Um, she was breathing, but um, the breaths were more like snoring. I recognize that they were, she was not getting good quality breaths. Could be characterized as agonal breathing possibly, but she was not breathing normally. What did you do? Um, I told the uh, other Good Samaritan that we needed to get her in a better position uh, so she could get adequate breaths because where she was, she was not. Um, at first, the person was a little reluctant because they didn't want to hurt her more by moving her. Um, but I convinced them that she's not breathing appropriately right now and we have to move her carefully so that she can have an opportunity to breathe. So did you? Yes. Did you help anybody else with uh, the group that you've identified as the Catholic communities? Objection answered. Overruled. Eventually there were several people that came and helped the young girl um, with various levels of medical training. I think one was like a retired military medic and there was a one, at least one nurse so they were helping her to the point where I really could not provide any additional aid so I kind of walked around to see if there's anybody else I could help. Was there? Yes, there was many people at that point. Did you help anybody else? Yes. Who? Um, I actually ran into uh, an officer who was also off duty from Franklin that I recognized. I didn't attend the event with him but I ran into him. Um, we worked together then to help at least one other person um, into the back of a sheriff's squad that had come on onto the parade route to try to help get people to area hospitals. What type of vehicle was that? Um, it was a... Mar um, there's been an objection. It's not speculative. Right. The witness may answer. Go ahead. Okay. Um, it was a Mark How was it uh, speculative? sheriff's uh, SUV. Did, what happened next? Um, by that time, there was a lot of medical equipment that was arriving on scene. I know there was a long board that we tried putting some of the victims on, um, but the long board wouldn't fit in the back of the uh, SUV because uh, it's, a, it's a hard seat, and we, it just wouldn't fit in there. Um, so we ended up using like a makeshift stretcher out of a blanket, and then we carried one of the victims into the back of the uh, sheriff SUV. And then um, the officer who was with me from Franklin, he actually rode with her in the back, or the female victim, uh, and went to a area hospital. Do you recall the first name of that female victim? I believe it was Marisol. M-A-R-I-S-O-L? Objection, legal It's a clarification. Legal oh, overruled. Yes. Did you eventually leave the downtown Waukesha area? Yeah, approximately 5.30 after all the the victims that were having lying in the road were taken care of. There was nothing left for me to do at that point. Thank you. I have no further questions. Any questions for this witness, sir? Cross yes. exam. That's a yes? Yes. All right, go ahead. Uh, are you... Would you happen to be on duty today, right now, if you weren't testifying? <laughs> yes. Oh, here we go. And so right now, you would, would it be fair to say that you are on the clock? Yes. What is him standing up supposed to do? Is that, I'm trying to, is this like another layer to the attempted an intimidation thing? Or like, what was really the point of this right now? I don't. So on the clock, would, would it be fair to say that you're getting paid right now? Yes. Would that be uh, for your testimony or just because you would be on the clock otherwise? These would be my normal work hours right now. So you're being paid to testify right now as we speak? Objection. Grounds. Estimates. Grounds. Once again, this is the dumbest thing. 
Who needs to be paid off to put you in a cage? You ran through a parade. This is where you be you belong in a cage. No one needs to be paid off to get you there. If I saw you do this, I would help to get you there. Like it's insane that he thinks people need to be paid to do this stuff. Um, he may answer. Yes. Any idea why you would be getting paid to testify? Because these are my normal work hours. This is when I'm working and I've been subpoenaed by the state to be here. So the state's paying you to testify? This is the dumbest the thing on to testify. earth. These are my normal work hours. This so is the dumbest thing on earth. Testifying in uh, open court is uh, part of your duties as an officer? Yes. So yeah. you've done this more than just this time, then that, would that be fair to say? Yes. And each time you were paid to do so? Yes. You, you made mention to the state of Wisconsin. Um, is that who you were subpoenaed by? Yes. Do you recall by whom? No. You, you were in fact subpoenaed though, would that be fair to say? Yes. And you don't recall by whom the subpoena was delivered to you? The, the name on the subpoena? No. <clears throat> so would it be fair to say that upon being subpoenaed, you, you were in touch with the state of Wisconsin? Specifically the Waukesha County DA's office. Do you recall who those interactions were with? Not specifically. So it would be fair to say you, you had an interaction with the uh, <coughs> Waukesha County District's Attorney's Office but don't recall who you spoke with? I spoke with a group of people from the DA's office. Do you remember <coughs> anyone by name? One, one of the people was the, um, the gentleman. A DA at the table. That the record reflect that uh, <laughs> the witness made a hand gesture towards the <laughs> prosecution table and identified attorney which out. Objection. The record will so reflect. Man, Daryl is he is really unraveling this case right now, isn't he? Man. He is he is really unraveling this entire thing. He Look at that. So you knew that it, it was a strong possibility that you would be called to testify then, I'm assuming. That'd be fair to say. Everyone's working That's, together, apparently. Did you uh, seek to testify in any way? I don't understand the question. Were you, were you actively seeking to testify? Like, did you, on your end, did you reach out and volunteer testimony? After the incident, I did complete a report of what I saw that day and gave it to the Waukesha uh, Police Department. So after after that uh, report that you submitted, um, you didn't follow up on what was happening in, in, in uh, the matter at, at that point? No. So it'd be fair to say uh, after you gave the report on the incident, you just went back to work and continued your normal duties. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Did you follow much in the aftermath of the, the matter at that point after you submitted your report? Not really. Don't recall seeing any news reports related to the incident? I may have saw some. <laughs> You made reference at one point to, um, well, let me back up. Were, was today the first time you ever saw those uh, exhibits, the videos and steel frame photo? No. So you've seen that before today? Yes. You recall how many times? Uh -oh. I believe probably one, once a piece. Um, do you recall who you were shown them by? 
the um, the the yes, same table. Yep. Same attorney. Yes. That the record also reflect that again he's made a right hand gesture to the prosecution table and identified an attorney with child again. No objection. Record will so reflect. And do you recall? I was gonna pause around for this. what. Just let it be. What date that was? What was it recently? Was it some time ago? It was recently. And what what would you define as recently? A few weeks, a few days, a month? A few weeks. So apparently, and I'm sorry for pausing right there, but um, so apparently that is a thing that you can do. So the prosecution can speak to witnesses um, before the trial. From what I'm learning in the comment section, and please let me know if like I'm kind of off with the way I'm seeing it. But apparently the prosecution, as well as um, I guess the attorney for the, the defendant, you know, which in this case would be Daryl, um, they're allowed to, I guess, maybe speak to witnesses in some way. So maybe they can ask them questions to prepare for their arguments. Um, from what I was reading in, in a few comments you guys left, let me know if I'm wrong in the, in the way I'm seeing it, but yeah, so him saying this and trying to make, trying to make it seem as if they're in cahoots because they showed him these exhibits so he can be prepared right now. It, it makes no sense. You know, this is all fair game and it's something that they they are allowed to do. That's why he has no objections, <laughs> which is funny. And, um, exhibit, I want to say it was 133. Or maybe in 132. What an attorney. He doesn't know. You recall seeing the uh, vehicle that you saw that day going through the parade route. Would that be fair to say? Could I see the exhibit? I'm not sure which one specifically you're referring to. He doesn't have it. You uh, should ask let's, the prosecution. Let's try exhibit 132. And, and maybe. The state put that up, please. Yep. For the witness only or for everyone? For everyone. All right, go ahead. Uh, I don't have it on my screen. It takes a moment. Okay, should good. have it now. Let me, jurors, yes. let me know when you have it in the jury box. I, I have it, I have it now. No, I need the jurors to let me know when they get it since there's a more of a delay to the jury box and those monitors. Um, in the jury box. Go ahead. Um, you made reference when when shown this exhibit, you made reference to be to be in position around like right in that area. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Right. Oh, he can draw on the screen. I don't know. I if you could play the video from, I don't know, maybe starting at around five seconds. Give me a second. I need to clear the annotation. You don't want to capture them anyway, do you? Oh, no. Not good. Right. Can, you, can you play it? Did you see the vehicle pass the position where you were standing in that exhibit? Yes. You made reference to the driver of the vehicle hanging out of the driver's side window and I think your words were you 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 were concerned that the driver may fall out of the vehicle do you recall saying that yes is it fair to say from really wish you would have that fell exhibit out. video that the driver of that vehicle is not hanging out of the window in that portion of the video, he is not hanging out the window. So what? So what portion? Let me back up. In any of the exhibits that you were shown, 
does any of them depict the driver hanging out of the window on the verge of falling out? No. So, at what position were you in when you observed what you said as the driver hanging out of the window and you being concerned that possibly they would fall out? It, where, where were you positioned at at that time? I would have been standing on the south side of Main Street, just west of Maple, by a few feet. Do you know of any reason why the, the exhibits are not depicting what you say you saw? They're only a few seconds That portion long. of the video only co covers from a distance where I was. It would have been the very tail end of that when it's going to the west. That video is probably from several hundred feet to the east of where I am. So several hundred feet? How how would you estimate that distance? Just a, I know where that video is taken from and where I was standing. That's, that's an estimate of about how far. And you know that for sure? It's an estimate. So it would be fair to say you don't know for sure. Objection. Grounds. Sustained. Stupid. Uh, Grounds for sustaining on it? Argumentative. Sustained Here we go with this ground the stuff again. Please rephrase Would it be fair to say that in the exhibit that was just shown, that from the position that you said that he you just answered this like a couple that, minutes ago. Would it be fair to say that the vehicle passed that position pretty quickly? Yes. I thought he was going to repeat the so same thing. So how were you able to get a look at the driver if it passed your position quickly and we can see lots of people standing in that position? When the vehicle passed by me, it was... The vehicle at that point in time was a threat to me and my family. So I was very focused on what was going on. Very focused. And it passed directly in front of me, about 10 feet away. So all my attention was directly on that vehicle. That's how I noticed that. This officer is answering. I I hope I'm saying his title correctly. I don't know if he's a, I believe he said he's like assistant. Oh boy. See, I'm trying not to be disrespectful about it. But this officer, <laughs> he's, uh, he's answering these questions great though. You can see that Daryl is trying desperately to rattle him. You see all these little tactics. He stood up from his chair and uh, he's making his cartoonish facial expressions like he, <laughs> his, his facial expressions are almost like Jim Carrey-esque. But uh, yeah, he's making all these weird facial expressions hoping that he's like nervous while answering the questions. He's doing amazing. And you saying it passed 10 feet, 10 feet in front of you? Approximately, yes. Does this uh, exhibit that was just shown depict what you... Are saying now that it passed 10 feet in front of you? Yes. So can we pull that back up? Sure. It'll be shown to everyone? Yes. And if the jurors would let me know when it's on the screens in the jury box, please. That's sick. He wants to keep showing this video to everybody in the courtroom. Like he could just show it to the officer. Do you want it played from a certain well, spot? I, I'll get to that. Just so we're clear for the record and for the jury, your position would be somewhere in here as you testify. Would that be fair to say? Correct. But can we put an X down? Hold on. He was, let him finish. He was, interrupted. Okay, okay. Give, given the angle of this, it's very hard for me to show precisely where I am. It's a little, it's, if I can draw an X, I'm trying to draw it as far, I'm sorry. That's okay. Like as far down here as possible. It, it's not right, it's not like any of these people here. It's actually, because this, this is still, all this video here is still on the east side of Maple. I am on the west side of Maple. So when I put an X here, I am essentially, I'm going to call it way down there, several hundred feet. I'm not any of these people pictured. Right. Does that make sense? Um, 
No, it actually doesn't, but I was referring so he doesn't want I probably it to make had sense. it a little coming this way, so by what you're it saying, doesn't matter you if it makes sense to him either way. We don't know what he means in this area. Would that be fair to say? Uh, yeah. object to the annotation. The witness drew twice now where he was and I think adequately explained it. Ground. Um, I'm going to sustain the objection and uh, direct Mr. Brooks to have the witness put where the area that he was in. Okay. So we'll clear the annotation and go ahead. You can do that, sir. Again, it would be. Now, did you mean to put that arrow? I did not mean to put that arrow there. <laughs> Let's clear it again. We'll have you do it. I know it's a touchy screen, so do it again. So you and your family were approximately in the area of where you drew the X. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Would it be also be fair to say that there are quite a few people in that area? Yes. Would it be fair to say that you can see, I guess it would be some type of lights from the vehicle that passed, would that be fair to say? Yes. Oh, you know what? I'm just now seeing, cause I was trying to see like the tail lights they were talking about is right here. I'm not sure if you guys can see my mouse. I'm finally like making out the tail lights of the SUV. And you estimate that? I think that's it. It might not have come through lights, yet in this part. And where you with a position that is 10 feet. Can you repeat the question? Would you say that where you can see those lights at, that, we, that you just said that you can see, and the position that you drew yourself to be positioned in, you would estimate that that's 10 feet? Yes. Oh, I'll object and move to strike. I think this is a misleading question. We're at the beginning of the video. Those tail lights are not the vehicle in question. Oh, okay. See, I was... Um, a different vehicle. <laughs> oh. so what you that's so, that's slimy stuff he really tried to trick him into saying that that's his his car or his SUV hold on there's been an objection there's been an objection I believe the question mischaracterized the evidence so strike the question strike his response please rephrase if you want to watch the video again to establish what you're asking that would be fine that's some slimy Before stuff he tried to do just then do you recall there being any other vehicles positioned by where you were standing at with your family? Hold on, are you talking about at the time that we're seeing this? At, at, at the time that, that we're looking at right now, do you recall any other vehicles being present, positioned where you were standing with your family? I believe there was a vehicle to my left, which would have been Immediately to my left was the group that was walking with the Catholic community of Waukesha. And just to the west of them was some sort of vehicle that was participating in the parade. So it had been a little bit further west? Yes. From, from your recollection, would you say that that was the vehicle that you said would have been positioned a little further west? I knew that couldn't have been the vehicle because just looking at the spectators, they weren't like, when you watch the portion of the video where the vehicle had already gone through, everyone was frantic and like you could see them in like mid running pose and stuff. So I knew something wasn't right when I saw that like it had to have been prior to it, but I wasn't sure. But that was, yeah, he's trying to, he and he's still trying to do it. He's trying to make him say like, oh yeah. This is when the vehicle came through. Nobody's freaking out or anything. Vehicle like, in the photo. In yes, the, the vehicle that. Thank you. The vehicle in the exhibit. I'm sorry. That's okay. I just want to make sure the we all understand. Okay. It's possible that's the vehicle. But you don't know for sure. No.
can you uh, play a little bit of it? I, I'll tell you when to pause. Can we bring the X off? We can, and we will. Go ahead and play. Pause. Would it be fair to say that it looks like the vehicle that's traveling, with, with direction would that be west? Which, which vehicle are you referring to? Uh, the, the, the vehicle that just drove through the middle of the screen. Yes. For would it record, be fair? Hold on. For the record, your the video was paused at four seconds. Go ahead. Does the vehicle appear to be in the middle of the street? Would that be fair to say? At that point, yes. And would you estimate the middle of the street to be 10 feet from where you were positioned at, at the time? No, it would be a little further than that. And with all the people in that general vicinity, would that in any way be hard for you to focus on if you could actually see who was driving the vehicle? No, when I gave the description, the vehicle was right in front of me and there was nobody in my way. Do you see yourself, can you, did your position, well rather, did your position move closer to the vehicle as we can see that it's in the middle of the street and you just testified to that. Did you move closer to the vehicle or did you move back from the vehicle? What did you do at that point when you noticed that the vehicle was approaching your position? It happened very quickly. I don't know that I moved in any direction when the vehicle came by. So to your recollection, you pretty much stayed where you were at? Yes, it happened very quickly. So it would be fair to say that it was... Well, let me back up. What, what will you define as very quickly? A few seconds? Yes. And in a few seconds, you were able to see the driver of the vehicle hanging out of the window and almost falling in and, and doing all that in just a few seconds? Yes. And you also made uh, mention to the driver of the vehicle looking behind them. Do you recall saying that? Yes. So in your recollection, you you witness the driver hanging out of the driver's side window, being concerned that this is Aston Anson. they would possibly fall out of the vehicle and looking back and continuing to drive in a straight line, all in a few seconds. Can you repeat that question? You were able to see, because you testified that everything happened in very quickly, and then you defined that as being a few seconds. Would that be fair to say that that's what you just testified to? Yes. So what I'm asking is, in those few seconds, you were able to see, from your recollection, you were able to see the driver of the vehicle hanging out of the vehicle you being concerned that the driver would possibly fall from the vehicle. Notice that the driver was looking back and continuing to drive in a straight line. You witnessed all this in a few seconds. I mean, he's trying to make it seem as if he's trying to make it seem as if like um, all of these things that happen were just like one at a time and like it takes a long like yeah, it's something like that would only take a few seconds. I don't uh Yeah, like as I picture it in my mind, I I could see all of that happening within a few seconds. So I would not say no continue sense. driving a straight line. All the rest of that, yes. You you witnessed all that in a few seconds. Yes. Done with the video? Oh yeah, we we done with the video. Thank I'm sorry. You.
just for we clear just so we're clear for the record the exhibit that we just watched the driver of the said vehicle is not hanging out of the window would that be fair to say correct you made a uh, reference to the make and model of the vehicle how you, how were you able to determine that in just a few seconds given my job i i know different makes and models of vehicles so i'm positive on the make and model so would you would you know the make and model of pretty much any vehicle that would pass you on a on a street most yes most but but not all some of the newer vehicles look very similar so it might be a little difficult, but I'm very confident in that vehicle description. You were able to determine that in a few seconds? Yes. The smugness in that you were able to determine that in a few seconds? Cartoonishly. You may mention to some mechanical problems. You believe that there may have been some uh, mechanical problems. How were you able to come to that determination? That was my initial concern because of the noise that the engine was making. It wasn't a normal engine noise. The RPMs were revving much higher than normal. Um, can you explain to the jury what, what do you mean by that? The, the RPMs, how, how that has any bearing on the engine? Sounds very, very high pitched. Um, this is very different than a normal vehicle driving down the road. Very, very high pitched, it would get your attention. And so upon hearing that, from your recollection, you thought because of that sound that there had to be some mechanical problems going on with the engine. I thought that there could be. But it was your first initial thought, correct? Correct. And you were able to to hear that sound and come to a conclusion that possibly there were mechanical issues Within all a in seconds. a few seconds. A lot runs through your mind at that point in time, yes. And would it be fair to say because depicting from the exhibit that there were quite a few people in that general area you were able to to hear this engine over all the noise and chaos that was going on at that at that time yes absolutely and you can hear the engine clear over all those people yes would it be fair to say that there were hundreds even thousands of people present at the parade that day hundreds for sure in my area sure in your general area hundreds yes would it be fair to say that Hundreds of people can get pretty loud. Yes. I like how calmly he's answering these questions because like I said, he tries to make it seem as if the way he's answering or the answers that he's giving are like, like I put before, like a logical person wouldn't do these things. Like he tries to make it seem as if he's, he's lying. But as you listen to it, like he he has so much confidence in what he's saying and the fact that the jury knows that this is something that a logical person would do, like I said, that he's he's fine with just saying, yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I said or that's exactly what I did. It was I heard it over all of those people, which like that's true. You would probably hear something like that. From the way he's describing the way that the SUV sounded, I'm sure he did hear it. Um, you stated that, I can't remember what, what side of the, the road you said it would be, but you made reference to a to a open alleyway. Do you recall saying that? No. Do you recall if you were uh, positioned by any cross streets? 
Yes, there was an intersection just to my right with Maple Avenue. Uh, do you recall if it was barricaded at the time? I believe it was, but I couldn't say for sure. Do you recall if any law enforcement were was stationed at that barricade? I don't recall. So it would be fair to say you don't recall if there could have been an exit out of the parade route at that time? I don't recall. Such a weird line of questions. I'm sorry I'm pausing so frequently right now. But somebody in the comments um, acknowledged this too. I remember they showed the barricades at one point. And it's like these things, his SUV could have easily like gone through one of those things. So the fact that he's trying to use this as an angle, like what does this even mean? What? Were there, uh, or was there law enforcement at the barricades, or were there barricades? What does it matter? Like, you could have easily gone through one of these barricaded cross streets, you know? His SUV, it, it wouldn't have hindered his SUV from going through, basically. He could have gone right through that thing. Like, it wasn't like a barricade that, because I remember when they first acknowledged it, when they said barricade, I was thinking it was something more along the lines of like, I don't know if you guys like, you know, like when you're driving down the freeway and you see like these concrete barricades on the side, like for some reason, when they initially said it, my mind went to that. But then when they showed it, I'm like, oh, this is one of those like little plastic or wooden barricades that you can just put up for events like this, like something that's easy to take down and everything. But he tries to frame it as if that's what it is, like it's some kind of concrete barricade that you just can't get through. He could have charged right through that thing. But, yeah. Fisher Price. <laughs> that's how that ends. In any of the uh, exhibits that you were shown, uh, and not the, not the steel frames, but the, the, the videos, 132, 133, and I think it was 134. Did you see yourself in any of those videos? I did not. Did you see your family members in any one of those videos? I did not. Which means nothing. Um, to back up real, really quick to the uh, mechanical issue again, you, you made mentioned to uh sounded like the engine was sputtering you recall that yes uh can you define to the jury what you mean by stuttering uh sputtering i heard noises that sounded like a almost like a popping which at the time i didn't know what was i thought it was possibly mechanical related okay sorry he said it was making a popping noise. I wonder if that, because I haven't looked too far into like the the gunshot thing. I, I know you guys remember this, but um, at one point people thought that there was like an active shooter that was actually in the area when the parade attack happened. So I, I wonder if that was a part of the reason, like the the vehicle was just making these crazy loud pop sounds and so people thought it was also like a, a gunman that was active on the scene in retrospect it may have been impacts of the vehicle hitting things i don't know i don't know which it was it would be fair to say that based on what you testified to earlier about the rpms and um you knowing that that would have something to do with uh the engine being louder, high pitched, I think it was the was what you said. It would be fair do you, do you think it would be fair to say that if that is pursuant to the actual engine, how could it how could that have anything to do with something being struck if that's engine that's inside of the vehicle? Dear God, what? <laughs> Can you I repeat the question? I'm not sure what the specific question was. The mechanical issues that you are describing was pretty much geared towards engine trouble. Would that be fair to say? A sputtering engine? A it, high was, 
it was very high pitched. So it, it could be a mechanical thing, or it could be the engine or the transmission being like in the wrong gear, so that it's sounding much higher. From from your from your line of work, obviously you've been doing it for a very long time. Uh, engine or trans transmission. Uh, possibly uh, the vehicle being in the wrong gear, as you just said, could that at any time cause someone who's driving the vehicle to lose control of the vehicle? I guess it could. Do you know for sure, is there, or is that just a guess? That's just a guess. So you don't know for sure if that would cause, if, if the driver may have been stuck in the wrong gear. I'm really surprised he didn't just take that answer. You know, the fact that he kind of asked it and then also followed up to like further clear up the fact that he isn't speci like he isn't um really saying that that does have an impact on the mechanical like side of the vehicle or not mechanical side, but the mechanical operation of the vehicle. Like the fact that he didn't just let that sit and like just move on to the next question. Like he seriously, which like that doesn't help him all that much, like really at all. The fact that he said, I guess it could affect the, um, the way the vehicles operated. But the fact that he asked it and then immediately was like, are you sure? Is it a guess or are you saying yes? Like, he really should have just taken that for what it was. But Fisher Price, Fisher Price, I'm glad he didn't. I'm not going to say, like, I, he should have done it, but I'm really glad he did. You're not sure if that would have caused them maybe to lose control of the vehicle at that point in time? It could. I, I don't know. <clears throat> he has no idea what he's doing, which is... No surprise. From the, uh, well, let me back up. From your recollection, do you recall there being any tents to the vehicle? Like tinted windows or anything? I don't recall. Can we pull up uh, Exhibit 9? Go ahead. Um, can we, how do you show it to everybody? Do you say publish? Yeah, it's on. <laughs> I'm sorry. Publish, yes. It may, and it is. Jerry will let me know when it's in the jury box, please. They're all seeking advice. Would it be fair to say from this still shot depiction that there are in fact tinted windows of the vehicle that you identified? It does appear that the windows in the back are tinted. So you don't see any tinted windows on the side too? Yes. When I mean back, I mean driver's door back. I, so, I, so, I apologize. I, I didn't know what you meant by that. Okay. Back driver's side window and the window the immediate window after that as well. Would it be fair to say that there, from this picture, there are two tinted windows that you can visibly see? Would that be fair to say? Yes. His window is rolled down right hand. now. No amount of and tint that would affect the fact that his, sorry, no amount of tint would affect the fact that his, his driver's side window is rolled all the way down and we see his face directly. Nine, steel frame. It would be also fair to say that the driver is not hanging out of the window at that point. That is fair to say. That's correct. To your recollection, do you know who uh, who may have took any of those uh, videos? Not the still frames, but the videos that were shown. No.
Were you injured in any way during the incident? No. Any of your family? No. Here come the claim questions. I'm pretty sure he's getting at that right now. Do you know if anyone uh, filed a claim in this incident? I don't, know, don't understand the question. Um, filed a claim like uh, It's hilarious to me that every time someone offers like resistance with this question and by resistance, I mean, all they do is simply ask him for clarification. He can never do it. Every time they ask him to just clarify, what do you mean by claim? He's stuck in the water it is it's funny. Seeking to be an injured party. Objection. Grounds. Sustained. Uh, working in law enforcement, um, have you at any point seen uh, the complaint in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Relevance. Grounds. Or well, rule team may answer if he's able. A complaint regarding this case? Yes. No. Do you know if there's a plaintiff in this case? Objection. Grounds. Relevance. Grounds. Grounds. Sustained. I sustain the objection. Okay, you. you don't have to answer. Right. Do you even know if there is a plaintiff in this matter? Same objection. Grounds. Sustained. Being in law enforcement for as long as you have, are you aware that there has to be an injured party to bring a claim? Objection. Grounds. Argumentative. Sustained. Also misstates the law. He's making faces like she doesn't know what she's talking about. And any of your uh, funny. investigations dur during your career, were you ever made aware at any time that the state of Wisconsin can be a plaintiff in a matter? Objection, relevance. Sustained. It's like a part of me is tempted to skip through this, but just in case we get a 906.11, I'm going to just let him, let him do his thing. And from your recollection, do you recall seeing any of the occupants in the vehicle at, at the time? I don't remember seeing anyone in the vehicle other than the driver. Were you able to get a look inside of the vehicle? I could only see the driver. I couldn't tell you whether there was anyone else in the vehicle or not. So it would be fair to say that you're not sure? That would be fair. No further questions. Thank you. Any redirect? Yes, please. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, if we could bring 132 back up for the jury, and while we're waiting for their screens to come up, I do have some separate questions. Go ahead. Uh, you testified that you're getting paid today as you sit there, correct? That is correct. By the city of Franklin? Yes. Okay. State of Wisconsin is not cutting that check. The objection. Hearsay. Overruled. Objection. Okay. Speculative. Um, overruled. You may answer. <coughs> Correct, it's just the city of Franklin's paying no one else. Do you get paid more money if there's a guilty verdict? Objection, hearsay. Overruled, it's not hearsay, you may answer. No. Okay. Direct your attention to exhibit 132 on the screen. I'm so uh, glad we he could has that. Jump ahead to maybe three seconds. And slow no it down one needs to, to be about paid off 40%. to do this. One last time, I'd like you to draw an X to depict where you and your family were standing, approximately. Objection. Uh, answered numerous times already at this point. I'd like to preserve this as an exhibit. Go ahead. He's done it so many times. 
Can we save that as Exhibit 132A and admit that into evidence? Objection. Relevancy. In answer, no response. Exhibit 132 is received. 132A. Sorry, 132A. Thank you. Objection. Overruled. We can see the red SUV. Short uh, little objection. In the roadway on Main the Street in this portion of the video. Is that right? Yes. Okay. At this point in the video, can you see the driver leaning his head or body out of the driver's window? No. Let's go frame by frame, please. Somebody in the comments told me he did this too. I had there. no idea it. We've paused it at about four seconds. This is the approximate location uh, on cross-examination where you were asked about your position and whether or not you were 10 feet from the vehicle. Do you remember that line of questioning? Yes. When the vehicle was 10 feet away from you, is this where it was on Main Street? Objection. Overruled. You may answer. Speculative. It's clearly not 10 feet. It would. The juror will disregard the comment made by Mr. Brooks. Um, it's not testimony. The witness may answer. I don't think seem to be in court. That name objection to that. For the record. Could you repeat the question one more time, please? When the vehicle was ten feet away from you, is this, as it's depicted right now in the video, is this where the vehicle was at that time? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. Grounds for the overrule, Your Honor. How's he the answer. Answer? The vehicle at this point would still be east of my location. Okay. So it hasn't, at this point in the video, it hasn't reached you and your family yet. That is correct. Let's go frame by frame a few more frames, please. And we'll pause there. Just for the record, it was not paused when you asked it to, so go ahead and get back to the spot. Yeah, we're going to that this it should be at four. So looks like the video is at four seconds. Yep, we'll play from there. Um, and if you could just indicate, hold on, oh, what, what speed you're at. We're going frame by frame at this point. Thank you. Is somebody okay, we'll in the pause street, that, or is uh, that five seconds. Is the vehicle now closer to the approximate location where it was near you and your family? Objection. Yep. Hearsay. Overruled. Yes. You described this video camera as being several hundred feet away from your location, is that right? Approximately. In your opinion, if the driver's body were hanging out the window at this point in the video, could we see it on the video? In my opinion, no. Okay. There was a question on cross-examination about uh, your use of the phrase open alleyway. So just to clarify, what, if anything, was between the group of the Catholic group and the south curb of Main Street as the SUV drove through that area? Objection leading. Overruled. I believe that there was nothing in that space. It would be an open space. And you testified that you saw the SUV veer from left to right. Is that correct? Objection. Speaking Over to you. Overruled. You may answer. That is correct. So I want to make sure that we're at about 40% speed here. This is still Exhibit 132. We're going to play from where we stopped, which is five seconds.
This is wild. In that last portion of the video, did you see the vehicle veer from left to right? Yes. Okay. Hold on. I didn't even... I was so busy, like, looking at the crowd's reaction. Hold on. <clears throat> that is so crazy. You can see it. He's literally zigzagging to hit more people. In that last portion of the video, did you see the vehicle veer from left to right? Yes. Okay. In your description of a mechanical problem, you talked about um, the engine revving in what sounded like a high gear. Is that right? Yes. And almost as though it were stuck in the wrong gear. Yes. You're not a mechanic, are you? No. Um, you testified that you thought it might be possible if a vehicle was stuck in the wrong gear that the driver could lose control. You remember saying that on cross-examination? Yes. Based on your limited knowledge of how vehicles work, if a, ve if a vehicle is stuck in the wrong gear, do you know if the brakes still work? Based on my knowledge, I would say yes. It sh they should still work. Your initial opinion that there may have been a mechanical problem, that changed at some point, didn't it? Yes. Spegley to you. Overrule. Yes. Why, why did that opinion change? Objection leading. Um, overruled, he may answer. It changed when I saw the driver and his body language. What was that body language? What did you see? Objection leading. Overruled, he may answer. I would describe him as being in an excited state, um, not in a state of panic, more Again, excited or almost happy about what was going on, not panicked or scared. So he really does try to use his facial expressions to like influence the way that people answer. He thinks that him making these faces will make them go, oh, wait, wait, wait. I mean, um, actually, he didn't. Dude, nobody cares. Nobody's intimidated by this. But uh, like I was saying, I think around day two or three like people were leaving comments and letting me know that he actually did something like this because i had no idea i'm not sure my eyes like twitching like crazy i i'm running off of like four hours of sleep <laughs> but no um yeah i think it was around day three you all told me that like he did he did in fact lean his body out of the vehicle to look back at the carnage that he caused and i had no idea that that happened just like i didn't know about the the phone call thing, which I'm going to look into that in a bit to see if like I can find something about it. Um, but yeah, well, it's crazy. You, All right. Thank you, sir. You may step down. This is a joke. Statement calls next witness. State calls Ralph Salyers. All right, sir, if you would please make your way to the witness stand. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right All hand, right. and my clerk, Teresa, who's on my left, will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear the... One second, I'm going to grab a hoodie. The testimony you're about to give should be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes. Thank you, sir. Please have a seat. All right. The first thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and spell each. Ralph Salyers III, R-A-L-P-H, last is S-A-L-Y-E-R-S. Thank you. Go ahead. Sir, how are you employed? The city of uh, Wauwatosa Police Department. What county is that in? It's in Milwaukee. Not Waukesha. Correct. I'm glad they addressed that right, <laughs> right from the start. You know, it's not going to stop Daryl from saying that he has a, an incentive to be here. Do you recall where you were on the afternoon of financial November incentive to be here, 2021? Yes, I was at the Waukesha Christmas Parade. In downtown Waukesha. Yes. What were you doing there? I was uh, attending the parade uh, with my family. My daughters were walking in the parade with their dance team. Were you on duty? No. That was not the extreme dance team, was it? No, it was Liberty Dance. Okay. Did you watch them uh, 
go down the parade route and perform? Yes. Do you remember where you were standing when that happened? Yes, I uh, was standing on the southeast corner of Maple and Main. Okay. Do you know, are you familiar with the Curry Insurance Building? No. Okay. Do you remember any other uh, businesses or landmarks in that area? The corner where we, we were standing, there's a parking lot right there. It's like one of the only parking lots in the area. Did you leave the parade at some point? Yes, once my uh, daughter's teams, uh, the team passed by, we went to pick them up at the Cutler Park, which was the rallying area for the after the parade. Where is Cutler Park in relation to where you were observing the parade? Would be uh, about a block south and a block east. Okay. Are there any uh, public landmarks in that area other than the park itself? The library is right there. The Waukesha Library? Yes. What happened after you got to the Waukesha Library? Uh, we picked the, the, my two girls up, and uh, we were intending to go back and finish the parade, uh, but it was a little cold and windy, and uh, we decided to head home. So what happened next? We were walking back. I had driven separately. I came later um, to the parade to surprise them, so I had driven separately, and uh, we walked back to the Height, the middle school parking lot where my wife had parked. My wife and her mother-in-law and my um, youngest daughter left with her and then my older daughter and I continued to walk toward my vehicle. What happened as you were walking towards your vehicle? As we were walking south down Maple uh, on the east side of the sidewalk I uh, saw an SUV driving behind the houses on the west side of Maple and uh, I just assumed it was driving in a alley or a, a driveway. Um, as I lost visual of the SUV, was driving behind houses, I heard a crash, which I am familiar with uh, vehicle crashes. It sounded like a vehicle crash. The vehicle then emerged a little bit further south from behind one of the residences there and drove down the driveway of that residence toward the street toward my daughter and I. Um, and then what happened? I saw that the front end of the SUV was severely damaged and uh, put two and two together, thought the damage was from the crash I had just heard. Um, uh, so the vehicle came, so eastbound down the driveway toward the sidewalk. I was standing across the street from it and then it came to a stop. Um, I saw the the driver of the vehicle exit the vehicle. Uh, he came around to the front of the vehicle, looked at it, and yelled, fuck, and uh, appeared to be panicked, went back and got items out of the driver's side of the vehicle and then ran southbound. The vehicle that you're talking about, do you remember what color it was? Uh, it was a maroon for Escape. What direction was the front of the vehicle facing when it came to a stop? It was facing east. And where were you in relation to the vehicle and the street? I was directly across the street from it on the sidewalk. Were there any vehicles between you and the red SUV that you've described when you saw the driver get out? No. Were there any other obstructions between you and the vehicle as you saw the driver get out? No. Do you remember approximately how long in seconds or minutes, you saw the driver um, as he was getting out and then leaving? It was just a few seconds. If I had to guess, 10 to 20. Okay. And you've already said it was across the street. Do you remember approximately how many feet it would have been between you and the driver? Overruled. You may answer. Uh, if I had to guess, maybe 50 feet at most from one side of the street to the other, plus the <clears throat> length of the vehicle. Could you, just, could you describe the lighting conditions at that time in terms of sunlight and street lamps, if there were any? Objection, yeah, it was, was uh, Overruled, you may answer. It was pre-dusk, I would describe it as. <clears throat> How would you describe the, uh, the physical appearance of the driver? What he was wearing? And any other physical descriptors? Uh, well, he just looked to be kind of in a panic. Obviously, I just <coughs> thought he was involved in a crash. And uh, he was wearing a gray hooded sweatshirt and blue jeans. What about race? I would Objection. 
Speculative. Um, overruled, he may answer. <coughs> I would have described him as a light skinned African American or possibly a Spanish <coughs> male. And you, uh, in fact, you prepared a, or excuse me, you gave a statement to a fellow officer shortly after this happened, the, den the next day, is that right? Yes. And that's the description you gave to that officer? Yes. You've seen uh, news reports about this case in the days or the time since November 21st, is that right? Yes. And you've seen photographs of Daryl Brooks in, in other contexts, is that correct? Objection. Yes. I do not consent to being called that name, nor do I know that individual. You want to know what's crazy? Nobody called him specifically Daryl Brooks. He just mentioned the name, and I guess he wanted them to know <laughs> that he doesn't consent. It's ridiculous. Well, you may answer the question. Speculative. It's not speculative. Clearly. Okay. Yes. The person you saw get out of the driver's seat of that SUV on November 21st, do you see that person in the courtroom today? The yes. objection is hearsay. How he's speaking as a, a first eye hand witness. Um, overruled. <clears throat> Not sure what that I believe means. he answered, but could you state it again? Yes, I see him. He's sitting at the defense table wearing a suit with a blue tie and a white surgical mask. And just to be thorough, uh, could we please have Mr. Brooks remove his mask for a moment? Please. Mr. Brooks, please remove your mask. Thank you. The record to reflect the mask has been How confident are you in your identification today? 100%. Is your identification in court today colored in any way by seeing pictures of Mr. Brooks uh, in other contexts? Objection speculative. Um, overruled, he may answer. No. Can you describe the difference, if any, between Mr. Brooks' appearance today and his appearance on November 21st? Objection hearsay and speculative. Um, it's neither one of those things. The objection is overruled. The witness may answer. Objection is irrelevant. It is relevant. He may answer. Not if he identified me already, so he said. Mr. Brooks, please. The objection is not want to be identified. The witness may answer. He's got very short hair right now, and he didn't then. What does hair look like on November 21st? Objection. Overruled, you may answer. Relevancy. Go ahead, you may answer, sir. Had longer hair. I'm going to ask that we put up for the witness only exhibit number 65, please. Go ahead. 65. <coughs> Do you see a video on the screen in front of you? Yes. We're going to play a few moments from that video just to give you a chance to see if you recognize what's, what's shown. Okay, that's good. We played seven seconds out of the total of 36 seconds out of it. Do you recognize that video? Yes. What does it show? Uh, it shows me walking southbound on the east side sidewalk of Maple, uh, just south of, <coughs> I think that's Prospect, um, walking my dog Elvis and walking with my oldest daughter Ava. Is that an accurate depiction of that scene as you saw it that day? Yes. yes. Overruled. Move, move exhibit. Answer. Yes. Thank you. Move exhibit 65 into evidence and ask to publish. Exhibit 65 has received permission to publish as granted. Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. This is 36 seconds. Uh, let's play it through one time at 100% speed, please. Trying to see if I see Daryl approach, but I don't think this is, I don't think he's gonna come into frame just yet. Go back to the beginning. Pause it at the beginning there. 
Do you see yourself at the beginning of this video? Yes. Could you circle yourself for us? That's a touch screen, just use your finger. Thank you, we can clear that. You're the only person walking a dog in this video, is that right? Yes. Okay. Uh, let's play and we'll pause at another point. We'll pause there at four seconds. Uh, you mentioned prospect. Could you draw a line down prospect for us? Okay, so that's the only cross street we can see clearly in the video. Correct? Yes. And do you see any vehicles on prospect at this point? I see two. Could you uh, circle the yes. one with clearly more than two vehicles? On prospect. Is he testifying? <laughs> is his testimony? How is he going to tell him what to say in his testimony? That's I'll, clear, I'll clarify. No, you said on prospect. Ridiculous. He answered. His answer may stand. <coughs> where's, where's prospect? Where, where are you from? He already drew a line. The witness would redraw the line for Mr. Brooks. Thank you. Go ahead. Do either of those vehicles have appearing to you today. Wow, he thought they were talking about this road right here. This is a uh, full Fisher Price. To have an inoperable full headlight? Fisher Price. Yes. Which one? If you could circle it, please. It's, it's, it's leading. It's not leading, he may answer. Thank you, we can clear that. And we'll resume at four seconds, please. Oh yeah, I see it. I just saw it. I just saw the SUV light enter from right here. Pause. Pause to 27 seconds. Do you see on the video right now the person you recall being the driver of that vehicle? Yes. Could you please circle that person for us? I'd like to mark and preserve this annotation as exhibit 65A, please, and move it into evidence. Objection. You're saying. The objection is overruled. Exhibit 65A is received. Go ahead. Yes, please. The clothing worn by the person you just circled, does that match your memory of what the driver was wearing that day? Yes. Okay. And let's play from this point. 27 seconds. You're just coward, man. Yeah, we'll stop there. From the 27 second point to the end of the video, the person who you circled, does that match your memory of what the driver did that day after he got out of the SUV? Yes. What did you do next? I attempted to call 911 to report a crash. If we could take the video down, please. Did you get through on the first call? No. What about the second? No. Third? No. Did you eventually get through? Fourth I'm time. Objection hearsay. I'm sorry, I didn't um, hear the answer. Um, the objection is overruled. Could you please restate your answer, sir? I believe I got through on the fourth attempt. And that's when you reported what you saw? Yes. <clears throat> Any questions on cross-exam for this witness? I do. Um, can we pull that uh, exhibit back up again? 65. And, and publish. 65 will be shown. Go ahead. And publish. Granted. Permission granted to publish. It's been received. Let me know, jurors, when 65 is in the jury box. It's up. Okay. <coughs> Okay, why does this why does this pause right now? It is not playing to set zero. Would it be fair to say that to the I guess that would be my right of the screen, you can see a white looking SUV by the by the walkway where people would be able to cross the street. Would that be fair to say? Yes. 
And would it be fair to say that the side street that you lined as being prospect, I think you said it was, where the two do not enter signs are, that would be the side street you're referring to? Would that be fair to say? Yes. Would it be fair to say that from the position that you're in, approximately here, and the side street being here, and just so the record is clear, Mr. Brooks has annotated the uh, touch screen with a line uh, depicting the direction of prospect uh, intersecting with the street, the perpendicular street. I apologize, I don't remember the name. And then an X where prospect, you see. Prospect is the street uh, in the direction of the line, but there's a cross street there. Okay. But the X is uh, indicating where uh, this witness his dog and his daughter were are in the video. Go ahead. So from where you're positioned right here by the X, you can see down this street from the position you're in. No. So how were you able to see if a vehicle would be coming from this way from the position you're at? I didn't see the vehicle driving on Prospect. I saw it driving behind the houses and through the yards. So you were able to see the vehicle behind houses? Between houses, behind You said houses. behind. You said behind. Right, through the yards, behind the houses. And you were able to see that from where you were? Yes. Can we take those marked lines and step down? Can you play it a little bit? I'll tell you. I'm sorry, the volume keeps peaking. I don't know. It's like the microphone is in his mouth or something. But no, like the volume keeps peaking every time he speaks a little too loud. I think it's just a little too close to his mouth. Um, but yeah, I'll try to edit some of that down a bit. I'm sorry if it's like too loud for some of the people that are listening with headphones and everything. Is it confirmed you want full speed? Uh... Yeah, well, I guess that would be regular, whatever is the regular speed. Yes, please. I'm sorry about that. Go ahead. Would it be fair to say from... Do you want to pause? Oh, uh, no, not yet. Just, you, you can let it play. I, I'll say, I think it's 36 seconds, so... Would it be fair to say from... Well, hold on, the video's showing, so wait till it's done playing and then ask a question. Or have us pause where you want it paused. Pause. So it's pause that 18 seconds for the record. I have to coach him. Would it be fair to say that in the 18 seconds shown to this point, you're pretty much just walking the dog, moving around, just walking normal? You, you don't make any sudden moves to the left to look or you don't stop in your tracks or anything. You're just walking along. Would that be fair to say? Yes. And you also made reference to hearing a crash. What point did you hear the crash? Sometime while a vehicle was driving behind the houses. Why didn't you immediately stop and stop in your tracks and say you just heard something? Why do you just keep moving as if you heard anything, nothing? I just turned my head to see if I could see anything and I didn't see anything. And so you just kept moving? Correct. So basically it was just like, oh, do 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 do, walking the dog. Yes. <laughs> Oh boy, so now day seven is the day of sound effects. So now, okay, so Daryl has practiced a little bit, right? He's practiced a little bit. I guess he thought now he should probably incorporate some sound effects <laughs> to help the jury understand how people walk down the street. So, yeah, we all walk down the street saying doo 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 and all this stuff. That's That is hilarious. You know, I had no idea me describing his like way of conducting a cross exam as like being cartoonish. He's actually like staring into that now and becoming more cartoonish as the days go on. You know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if his eyes pop out like in the mask or something like this is very weird. Right now. Like a Looney Tunes character, apparently. 
pretty much. Pause it. Would it be fair to say that another roughly eight seconds of play from 18 seconds to 26 seconds, still you didn't stop in your tracks, still you didn't turn to look at the other side of the street in any manner. You're continuing doing what you're doing. Is that fair to say? Yes. Why so nonchalant? When the vehicle emerged from the back of the house, I saw that it was damaged, and then in my mind, I knew what I had heard. With all respect, that wasn't the question. Why so nonchalant at that point? I didn't think it was uh, anything of great emergency at that point. I just figured that an intoxicated driver may have just struck another vehicle in the back of that alley, and now he was going to take off and run. And being a... a being in law enforcement, why would you not investigate that if you heard something crash? Why, being, being an officer of the law, why would you not investigate that if you heard that? I was with my daughter, and I would in no way put her in harm's way. Well, I, I would think it would be fair to say that you can't handle yourself. You, you're obviously a law, uh, uh, an officer of the law. Oh you're trained goodness. to be able to handle yourself. Would it be fair to say that you could have invested, at least investigated the sound that you heard, the sound like a crash, at least? Objection. Grounds. Sustained. It's also a compound question. Please rephrase. So all these thoughts, maybe it was just a drunk driver and they're going to they're gonna run anyway. And all these thoughts, and that never piqued your interest to investigate? Sometimes being a good witness is the best thing to do. That's why I called 911 to report it immediately. Now, that, that's fair, but... Right, and he's off duty. What does he expect him to do? I mean, he's not on duty at this point. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't imagine that he just walks around um, with all of his police gear and all of this stuff. Like, a, if, like if he would have investigated the situation like he's saying... And Daryl is hostile, you know, which is a, a major possibility. Like, why would he put, like you said, his daughter in that situation to try to be a tough guy or something to prove that he can handle himself? Like, this is just the weirdest thing. Now he's really trying to just antagonize this, this guy. Being an officer of the law, you're right there. Again. Objection. Not a question. Also asked and answered. Also argumentative. S sustain this to the form of the question. What, you don't need to answer, sir. Next question, please. What if someone may have been hurt at that point? You don't think you would have an obligation to investigate if some, someone may have been injured at that point? That's why I called 911. Can you play the rest of the video? We sure can. Go ahead. It did a weird little like motion thing. That's probably from the camera. I, I, I would guess. But in that entire in that entire video, is it fair to say that you did not reach for a phone and take out a phone from? Are you serious? Your right now? Or anything this is getting that? really ridiculous. I can't. I I can't tell if I did from the video itself. I know. So when I did you make the call? At some point after you started running. Who is you? The defendant, the driver of the vehicle. So uh -oh. panic how, attack incoming. How long after you saw the driver of the vehicle? That is so amazing. I'm so glad that that just happened. I'm so glad he didn't play the game with him, and that he didn't back away or like shy away from that. You you could tell the way that Daryl answered him. He was trying to like make him. Uh, he was trying to, like, I guess, intimidate him into clearing that up or not agreeing that he is the one that was in the video. No, it was you. You you were the one that ran. Did you you are the, the defendant. On call? Within seconds, I believe. Is it fair to say that we don't see that on the video? The video is very small at that point. It's hard to Is see. it fair to say we don't see you do that on the video? Yes. Can we pull the video back up? Can you take it to 27 seconds and pause 
at 27. It's amazing how much he expected to happen within this little 30 second video. Like it's very ridiculous. Uh, can you, maybe maybe 28, I'm, I may be mistaken. Maybe just go one more second, maybe to 28. Or you know what, no. She could pause right there. Would it be fair to say? I'm definitely gonna have to edit that down. <laughs> you noticed the vehicle in this area, right there? Yes. Can you remove the X? And what do you see right there? I'm not, I don't understand. Do you see anything right there? An individual, uh, anything? Do you see anything right there? It's Inside hard to the tell circle? from that picture what I can see. Can you move it? Can we blow it up a little bit or move it closer? Silly. This this cross exam needs to bit. end. I don't know that it can be. He's just in. trying to confuse this guy. Capability. So we can zoom in as long as the defense okay with dispensing with any technological foundation issues there. But we can zoom in. We have the ability to do that. Do you, would Would you like it zoomed in? What, what do you mean by not say that again? I'm sorry. We can zoom in if you want to. Can you zoom in just a little bit? Just, just a smidge. That's the that's the extent of our zooming capabilities okay. with this. Software. No, that's that's fine. That's fine. Can you see anything there? It looks like something white. I don't know if that's the driver. It looks like something white. Yes, it's light colored. White color what? It's light colored. Light colored, but you did say white. Is that fair to say that you just said white? I just did say white. Can we erase the circle? Zoom back out, take the, it's a, like a box there in the corner that's kind of throwing the whole exhibit off. Take it back to the regular. You testified earlier that you so we see the game plan for this cross exam. Uh, with a gray hoodie, as you refer to it. Do you recall saying that? Yes. This one's white. You with, just said it's white. Without your circle right there, would you, from your recollection, say that that was the driver you saw? I don't know what that is at this point. You don't, it's you just don't know? a paused video. It could be a glare. It could be a person. I don't know. It. You could play it again. Well, let's play it again. The 27 the, stop right there. Okay. Yeah, no. from from the twenty seven mark. The I think it just played maybe what a second, half a second or something like that. Did you see that whatever you said you didn't know what it was? Could have been a person. Could have been something else. Did you see it move from the position that it was before? Yes. And you also identified that that was white, right? That's what you said, correct? I did say that. And would it be fair to say that you saw the driver? In gray, would that be fair to say? Yes. Take the circle off. Man, these are just you also stated crucial that points that the jury needs you were to about understand. Fifty feet from the ve well, you added the vehicle in until you said maybe fifty feet, and then depending on the length of the vehicle, would that be fair to say? Yes. And from where from where you are here. To hear, because it would be fair to say we can't see a vehicle in the picture at that point. Would that be fair to say we can't see a vehicle that would be facing you because you said it was facing you? We can't see a vehicle. Would that be fair to say? From the angle of vehicles obstructed, yes. So that would be 50 feet from, approximately 50 feet from X to X? Approximately. And you were able to see the driver and a description from where you from where you're standing now to where the other X is. Yes. 
and you were able to make out the race of the driver from where you were at? I guessed. You guessed. Raced. So you're not you're not for sh for certain. I wasn't for certain for certain at that time. He never gave a specific race. He just guessed a couple. So what conclusion were you coming to at that point? Just an educated guess or what? Can you explain further? What? How, how, what? Would it be fair to say that Your guess could have been inaccurate? Could have been. And you also stated that you saw news reports and a description of the driver on the news. Would that be fair to say? Yes. And you made reference to the driver's hair. Would that be fair to say? In my testimony, yes. You, you brought up the hair is what I'm saying. You, you said long hair. That be fair to say? Yes. And you will be able to see here if you describe the driver wearing a hoodie? Yes. You'll be able to see here and tell the length of the hair. If it's hanging out of the hoodie, yes. Well you didn't you didn't say all fairness, you didn't say it was hanging out of the hoodie, you just referred to the hair. Yes. How else would you know that? Hold on. There's been an objection. I believe the witness understood the question. Okay. So we see the tactic that he's trying to use on this day. Basically, he's just reaching for anything at this point. Like any single thing, uh, he's just going to grasp onto it and say that this is an inconsistency. But now I'm... I want to hear that phone call. A lot of you told me in the comments section he did a he had a phone call with his mom um while he was in jail and he told her that he's purposely trying to slow down the trial and like just say whatever he can to like muddy up the waters here pretty much. So yeah, I I really do believe he did that. And so and you can I'll see it right the here. Objection, in full right answer now. may stand next question. Is it any possible way you could have gotten a description from the news reports instead of what you actually recall? No. And how did you determine that? In the <coughs> report I gave, in my uh, statement, I described what I saw that day, not what I saw in the news. And you also described two different colors of dress. Once, once you said gray and one you said white. Would that be fair to say? I said that the item in the video appeared to be white. Did you not say that the item moved? As you say item, did you not say the item moved from where it was at? Yes. Would it be fair to say that there can be no movement to an item if it wasn't a, a, a person? What is this? Yes. This is like a little brother just that's like trying to get under your skin really bad. Like it really, this is like a younger sibling or something. That just tries desperately to outsmart you to like really annoy you. The person you. that you described wearing white. On the video screen it appeared white. It appeared light colored or white. Would it be fair to say that you said white? That was your first? Yes. At any time in that video, could you see here? In the video? In the video. You can't see very much in the video. No. After making the 911 call, did you return back to the scene where you noticed the vehicle? Yes. And did you investigate at that point? Yes. So what changed from the point that you heard a crash as you say and then returning back to where you saw the vehicle would change between those times as I was talking to the 911 dispatcher I wanted to get give them better details about the vehicle so I walked back over to so at the time that. at the time that you initially made the 911 call there was still 
details about what you saw that you were unsure of. Would that be fair to say? I believe they asked me what the license plate was, and I couldn't see it from where I was at, so I walked back over to give that to them. So you, you couldn't see the uh, the license plate of the vehicle from where you where you were at? There was no license plate on the front of the vehicle, so I could not see it. So you came back to investigate if there was a license plate that you can identify? Yes. Did you investigate which you may have heard the vehicle strike? No. Any reason why not? By that time, a large crowd had gathered and there were sirens. I could hear them in the distance and the police were, were responding rather quickly. So you didn't take the opportunity to see if anyone, from, the, from saying that you heard a, a loud crash, you didn't take the opportunity to investigate if anyone may, may have been hurt no. From that loud crash? I didn't know. Any reason why not? No reason. Any other details about the driver that you can recall as far as uh, further clothing? No, I thought at some point I saw a Packers logo on his clothing or something to that effect. Did you put that in your report? Yes. At any time, have you read or saw a complaint in this matter? No, just my report. Any other officers that came to the scene because you made reference to officers were, was responding by the time you came back to give more details to the dispatcher, more officers were arriving. Uh, do you recall if any, any one of those officers investigated the loud crash you heard? I'm unaware. But they would, they, it would be fair to say that they gave reports from what they observed when coming to the scene. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Do you recall any of them asking you a, a, a description of what you saw? I didn't speak to any officers on scene that day. Any reason why not? I just seeing, left. Seeing as, how, seeing as how that you made the initial 911 call, I, I'm sure the officers were probably responding by that time anyway, but seeing as how you made the 911 call, you didn't collaborate with the other officers to try to, you know, like piece together what you may have saw? I'll object to the characterization that that was the first 911 call. I didn't, I didn't say first, I said he made the initial 911 call. Initial means first, so sustained as to the form of the question. Besides, uh, well, let me back up. After seeing the description on the news, did you say to yourself, that's the driver that I saw? I recognize the driver as the person I saw on TV and or, or social media. <coughs> Social media or the news? I don't recall, probably both. Both. Did that, did you report that? Uh, when I gave my statement, that's what I told them, yes. And did you report that description before or after you saw it on uh, the news or social media or both? 
I gave a statement the very next morning. I worked at 6 a.m. I reported it to my supervisor who contacted Waukesha investigators and had one of our detectives take a statement from me that morning. The statement that I gave them was from my experience at the scene, not from what I saw on TV or social so, media. So it would be fair to say by that next morning you had already seen reports on the news or social media? Yeah, or both? Yes. And your report was the next morning, so could it have been fair to say that that's where you got the description? No. Did you learn any additional information uh, that you don't recall having via social media or the news after you had already made your report? I don't understand the question. Did you learn any additional information after you had already given your report? Learn information about what? About uh, the description of the driver, what had happened, at the parade, any anything? Well, originally I had no idea what had happened at the parade. I thought it was just I witnessed a hit and run crash. I had no clue what had happened at the parade. So you, you, you just said now you witnessed a hit and run crash, but you also said that you didn't said investigate thought. the crash that you heard. Correct. So, so I'm how did you characterize? That characterize it as a hit and run crash if you never investigate what you heard. Well, because I heard a crash and then the driver ran. Well, you also stated, to be fair, that you didn't investigate well, the crash. So how was it any... I'm so serious. <clears throat> Excuse me. These are baby brother tactics right now. This is insane. He's really trying to grasp onto these little... Like, really, I think he's hoping that he gets flustered. And he's trying like way too hard to do it. Like none of these things that he's saying are rattling this officer. Like none of it is bothering him whatsoever. He's answering the questions. And then he even positively identified him and said, you were the one I saw running. So all the sovereign, all the sovereign citizen stuff, you know. He waits to know out the window. what you were witnessing if you didn't investigate. Because I heard a crash and I saw the driver run. So in my mind, I assumed that was a hit and run crash. So it was an assumption you didn't know? Yes. Which is I what he already crash. said. I didn't see the crash. <clears throat> correct. So. He's telling him correct. Would it be <laughs> fair to say testimony. that the, from the assumption that there was a hit and run crash, as you say, the only way to know for sure where the crash came from would, would be to investigate it. Would that be fair to say? Yes. And you stated for the record that you did not do that, correct? Yes. So why would you report it as a hit and run crash if you were not sure what it was? Well, based on my training experience as a crash investigator, that's what I thought it was. I think we're getting close to the end of this uh, cross exam. Did you talk to any uh, any of the people that that lived in those houses to see if they had heard the same thing you heard? I spoke to uh, maybe a resident of the apartment or the house right there who just said that the vehicle didn't belong there. Did they report to you that they heard any crash? No, not that I recall. Did they report to you that they saw a driver? No. So as far as you can recall, you were the only one that heard the crash? As far as I know, yes.
I wouldn't be surprised if right now he asked, how do you just assume that you were the only one that heard it if you asked the neighbor? Did the neighbor not say, like, the most pointless no question. questions? Thank you. Any redirect? Please, thank you. You testified that you didn't investigate the sound of this crash, correct? Yes. Were you off duty that day? Yes. When you're off duty, do you carry a police radio with you? Objection that, that is uh, irrelevant. It's an officer at the law. Overruled. He may answer. No. So you, if you did get into a pickle, you wouldn't be able to call for backup, would you? Objection. The speculative still has a cell phone. It's not speculative. He may answer the question. Correct. Uh, your daughter, the one that we saw in Exhibit 65, I believe, 65. Um, is she a sworn law enforcement officer? Objection. Irrelevant. Overruled. You may answer. No. At the time you heard the crash but didn't investigate it, did you know that the vehicle that you saw had been involved in hitting dozens of people on Main Street minutes Object earlier? Objection. Uh, during cross answer. Overruled. He may answer. I had no idea. When the driver got out, and just to clarify again, who, who was the driver? The defendant. Daryl Brooks? Daryl Brooks. Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. And Mr. Brooks, I'm sorry. I don't consent to being called that name. <laughs> no one cares. So noted. Next question, please. Did you see anybody else get out of the vehicle? No. When you went back to check the vehicle, was there anybody inside? No. Um, on this issue of the white clothing, can we please show for everybody uh, exhibit number 120, which has previously been published? Go ahead. You see exhibit number 120 on the screen in front of you? Yes. You see the person who appears to be behind the driver's wheel of the red SUV in that picture? Objection. What is the relevancy? Overruled. This, this picture is still so disturbing to me. Every time I see it, it is the most... It's, a, it's just a disturbing answer? image to see. Yes. Like, you see you exactly how color it was that day. The shirt that that person's wearing. Light gray or white. That's all I have for this witness. All right, thank you. You may step down. Uh, may this witness be excused from the screen? He may. All right, I am going to excuse the jurors for a, and actually take a recess. It's a little bit later, but we'll take our mid to late morning break at this point, about 15 minutes or so. I'll rise for the jury, please. I think I might um, do some reactions to like the Alex Murdaugh case that just wrapped up. I actually have been avoiding like looking at any sort of footage about it just because I want to learn as I go along with that. So honestly, I'm not even completely sure what happened. I think somebody in the comments section asked me to react right, to that as recess. well. Please be back in 15 minutes. I think somebody in the comment section a while back um, asked me to react to it as well, and I've just been like avoiding looking at any sort of footage about it just because I want to have like an organic reaction once I start doing that. So let me know in the comments if you guys like would be okay with that or um, if you want me to continue just with the Daryl Brooks trial and then maybe I can implement something else. Yeah, let me know if you guys want me to do that. I'm going to take a little bit of a break because, like, I got to <laughs> – I'm actually working right now. So I'm I'm going to just tell you guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. Um, hope you did something good for somebody today. Hope somebody did something good for you. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.